The Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering would like to present this video on measuring and recording the properties of various structural materials. We will be performing tension tests with specimens of steel, brass, aluminum, wood, and plexiglass. We will also be performing compression tests with specimens of mortar, wood with parallel grain, and wood with perpendicular grain. Before you begin, create a table like this one. Let's start with the tension specimens. Although these have been made to a standard size, you will still need to measure them to get an accurate result. Take calipers like this and measure the diameter. With the calipers that we're using, one revolution of the needle represents 5 millimeters. Here the reading is 8.75 millimeters. For each specimen, measure the diameter at five different points along the length selected at random. Don't record diameter on the widened ends. These ends are wider so that they can be clamped by the testing machine. Calculate the average of these to get the final value for diameter. Repeat this for each material you intend to test. Next, calculate the area of each specimen. Now we can start testing the materials. We will be starting with steel. Each specimen will be placed in the testing machine by the technician. They will clamp the ends and attach a strain gauge. For each material tested, the machine will apply a deformation at a fixed rate. The strain and load applied are being recorded on the computer by means of the material testing software. The software records load in kilonewtons and deformation in millimeters and saves the information to a file. Before the steel fails, a region of the rod will start to narrow. This is called necking. When failure occurs, the test is complete. The technician will remove the sample and reset the machine. This is what the steel rod looks like after failure. Record the failure load in kilonewtons from the machine. The same procedure is done when testing the other materials. This is aluminum. This is brass. Necking has occurred for each of the three metals. This is wood. The wood will fail in shear as the grains separate. And this is plexiglass. Plexiglass is a brittle material that will not deform much before failing abruptly. When all the tests are done, calculate the ultimate strength of each material by dividing the failure load by the cross-sectional area. Finally, compare the gathered values of ultimate strength with published values for those same materials. Published values should be represented as a range with a minimum and a maximum. From the data gathered by the machine, we can plot stress against strain. Here is the stress versus strain relationship for steel, aluminum, and brass. For the compression test, we will be testing specimens of mortar, wood with the grain parallel to the applied load, and wood with the grain perpendicular to the applied load. These blocks are the compression specimens. Just as with the tension specimens, record the dimensions of these blocks. Use the calipers to record the length and width of each block. Measuring each dimension once will do. Calculate the cross-sectional area of each block. The technician will replace the clamps used for tension with compression plates. For each compression test, the machine will apply a uniform compressive deformation. This is mortar. It is a brittle material that will fail by crushing at a relatively low deformation. This is wood with grain parallel to applied load. It will fail when the wood grains deform at a certain point. This is wood with the grain perpendicular to the applied load. It will fail by buckling in one direction and consequently splitting into several pieces. From the values of failure load in kilonewtons, calculate the ultimate strength of each material by dividing it by the cross-sectional area. In the remarks column, comment on things like how the material failed or, if applicable, why the ultimate strength was not within the range of published values.